Hi everyone, Aiden here with eTrailer. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Thule Epos two bike platform style bike rack. This is gonna be a great option to carry your bikes if you've got a variety of different styles, anywhere from carbon frame to bikes with fenders, e-bikes, or alternative frame. Let's check it out. The thing that makes this so versatile is the mast system. And that's gonna be the primary way we're holding the bikes. And with that, you've got the option to attach to that rear wheel, like we have on our outer bike today, or you can attach to the frame like we have on our inner bike. This is going to be able to rotate 360 degrees. It's height adjustable. We'll see that a bit more later in the video, but that allows it to adapt to all kinds of different alternative frames. For bikes with fenders, where attaching to a front tire isn't very feasible, you've got that frame hold that you can do. Or in the case of our carbon frame bikes, where we don't want frame contact, that rear wheel is an option too. The rear wheel does come with a bit of a caveat. It's really only this front quarter of that rear tire that we can clamp onto where we are today. Front tire is not advised by Thule and anywhere else on that wheel or maybe say the forks, these points of movement, they don't recommend. So at the very least though, you still have the option. And the only limitation you'll really find for yourself is say a carbon frame bike that had fenders that maybe stretched really far, but even so, this section here would be okay and very likely would be available. At the bottom of the tray, we've got our secondary points of contact, these ratcheting wheel straps on both sides that pull the bike down and in. And these are true ratcheting straps. That's one of the things that lets this get really secure is the fact that we can get it just a bit tighter than we would be just pulling the strap through by hand. That extra little click goes a long way to make sure your bikes are solid. And that's one of the things that gives it its great weight capacity. The Epos can support 140 pounds of weight across your two bikes. So that could be two 70 pound bikes, or even if you had one 75 pound bike, you can do that so long as your second bike weighs no more than 65 pounds. So pretty solid capacity there, considering the average weight of an e-bike is around that 60 pound mark. If you've got some heavier ones, they'll be able to attach to this rack no problem. This rack is gonna work for a wide range of bikes. And I really like that about the Epos, but one of the things I like even more is how accessible it can be for a lot of different people. And what that really comes down to is the ease of use. And for me, that all starts with the tilting feature where you can tilt the rack away from the vehicle using the foot pedal on the outside and gain access to the back hatch of your vehicle, allowing you to get stuff out of the back, your helmet, biking shoes, a snack, Maybe just have a place to sit down and change your shoes before or after your ride. You can do that. And the reason I like the tilting feature so much is one, how aggressive it is. It gives us tons of room. So even on a larger lift gate, like a Suburban or a Forerunner, you're gonna have the space more than likely, but it hinges at a different point than most platform style racks do. So even though we've got an e-bike on here, it's not super heavy, at least it doesn't feel very heavy. It positions that weight a bit closer to the car, so it's not all coming down on you at once, making it easier to operate. Not to mention that foot pedal is so easy to reach that we don't have to crouch down or reach through our bikes. We maintain a stable, upright position where when this releases, you've got a strong hold and it's not all coming down on top of you like it might with some other racks. One of the other things I really like about it is the fact that it's compatible with a ramp attachment. It doesn't come with it, so if you don't have any need for a ramp kit, that's okay, you don't have to get it. But if that's something that concerns you, maybe loading those heavier e-bikes is challenging, you can get that ramp and it'll just slot into the very end of the tray, allowing you to roll the bike up that ramp for easier loading and unloading. When you're unloading the bike, I always like to start with those wheel straps we saw at the bottom first because they're not really holding the bike upright and we can do this with both hands. When they're not in use, you can just tuck them to the side so they're completely out of the way and it's just a bit more neat and tidy. And that'll just be the same on both sides. 
Up at the top, that strap that we have wrapped around the wheel of our carbon frame bike operates the same way with just a push button to release the ratchet strap. And once that's fully released, all you have to do is lift the bike up and away. And when you go to get that inner bike, this mast will also fold down. It's got a small strap keeper to keep it all neat and tidy, and it just sits flat to the side, so it's completely out of the way. A few other specs to know, this can support a maximum tire width of three and three sixteenths of an inch. Not great for the fat tire bikes, also just because these trays are a bit more narrow too, but that's what it can handle as far as tire width goes. And for maximum wheel base, it can go up to 53 and one eighth of an inch. So pretty good on that front. Just keep it in mind as you're checking out your own bikes and seeing if they'd fit here. Now both bikes can be locked up by the lock core that's located on the mast. And that prevents this button up top from being pressed and releasing the strap. Now me personally, this is just a plastic lever and it doesn't fill me with a ton of confidence. Thule does offer a separate cable lock kit that you can attach to the carrier and would allow you to wrap a cable lock around your bikes. For me, that's the more traditional method and I think I'd trust it just a bit more. There is also an upgrade kit available. So if you start with this version and maybe your state changes its local laws and regulations where the license plate has to be displayed and can't be obstructed, your bike rack isn't gonna be obsolete. You can just get that add-on kit and add it when you need it. Just check your local laws and regulations because it can vary depending on the state. And for me, I like just having it visible if it's possible and it's nice that Thule gives you that option. The only thing is that with the light kit, you'll need four pole wiring on your vehicle. And if you don't already have that, you could plug in your vehicle information into our fit guide and find the right kit for you so that you can have that on your vehicle and if you're not confident in installing that wiring yourself, you can use our dealer locator tool to find a local installer near you to help you get that installed. Now with both bikes unloaded, we can get a better look at some of the dimensions and the space it takes up on your vehicle. From the center of the hitch pin hole to the furthest point out on the carrier, which is our foot pedal, that's gonna be 33 inches. And you can take that same measurement to your own vehicle and figure out how far it's gonna stick out from the back. And then from that same point to the closest edge of the carrier, that's gonna be six inches. Again, you can take that measurement to your own vehicle to find out if you have enough bumper clearance. I think in most cases you should be good, but I'd really watch out for it on your inch and a quarter hitches because they tend to be a bit more recessed under the back bumper and bumper clearance does tend to be more of an issue there. And since this bike rack is compatible with a number of different hitch sizes like we'll see later, that's something to take into consideration. The other thing to consider is the fact that there's not really any folding feature for this, at least not upright against the vehicle. So if you leave it in the hitch full time, you're not gonna be able to save space when it's not in use. It does have this upright folding. It, I call this the sort of suitcase style where it makes it a lot more compact for storage in your garage and gives you a bit of a grab handle on top but it's not gonna really do much for your vehicle. If anything, it's gonna just obstruct your backup camera and your license plate more. So if you do leave it in the hitch, I'd recommend just probably leaving your bike on there for added visibility, but also leaving it flat. Looking a bit closer at that hitch, you can see what I mean. It's gonna work with our two inch by two inch receiver tube using that included adapter sleeve you see in the middle. And if we removed that silver piece, it would work with inch and a quarter as well, both class one and class two due to the light weight of the bike rack itself. Now it uses a stinger style hitch pin. So whenever the anti-rattle is loosened up, you could pop that out and that's just attached to the carrier full time. So no hitch pin to lose. And the anti-rattle device is integrated. It's gonna be this handle here and has a lock on the end, which is key to like to the locks up top. Now the Anti-rattle is the only thing I don't love because it's just a bit awkward. The handle will fold backwards and in, into lock and out to allow you to more quickly turn it and be able to fit around the wheels here. So while we're loosening, that actually works pretty okay because it gets easier and easier to turn. But as we tighten it, 
and that rattle starts to go away, we're gonna reach a point where we just don't have very good leverage and we need to pop the handle out. At which point we need to just pull straight back, let it free spin, it'll slot back in and we can give another half turn. And just repeat this until everything is completely solid in the hitch. It's not the worst, don't get me wrong. It's just hard to see because it's tucked under there pretty well and the wheels are in the way. But when you get it about as tight as you can, it's nice and solid in the hitch there. You can just free spin it around to the side and lock it up. In this folded state, you kind of get a bit of a handle here. That's gonna be really helpful for pulling this in and out of the hitch. And while we were down by the hitch, you might've noticed me press a lever that moved a bit. That's just located kind of near the anti-rattle device and it allows you to fold the shank upright, at which point those wheels we saw earlier are now making contact with the ground and allow us to wheel the carrier around a bit more easily. So that folding and rolling feature for me is what really sets the Epos apart. Again, coming back to accessibility, it makes the carrier a lot easier to move and keep in your garage when it's not in use. They even make a cover for it if you wanted to cover it up and keep dust and stuff off of it, just giving it a bit more protection while it is in storage. And when it comes down to it, I think the Epos is a really solid rack. Probably not one that I would personally put on my vehicle just because I'm not as concerned about the accessibility features. I'd rather go with something like the Kuat Envy, which I think is a nicer looking rack and does share a lot of the same compatibility with different bikes like e-bikes and carbon frame. But if accessibility is your concern, then I think this is a really solid way to go. If you're looking for an alternative that maybe comes with a ramp just out of the box, I'd recommend the Hollywood Racks Destination e-bike carrier. It's not gonna have the same sort of fit and finish where the rack is super easy to use, but it does have a folding feature if you leave it in the hitch full time. The tilting mechanism is really similar to what the Epos uses. So again, it's gonna be a bit easier if you do have bikes fully loaded on there. And it comes out of the box with a ramp attachment. So if that part's really important to you, you can check that out. But I do think for the capability to fold up, have the tail light kit and license plate kit added on down the road if you need it, and how much lighter this carrier is, I think the Epos does win over the Hollywood Racks destination in that aspect, but it's just something to look into. But if you liked everything you saw here today and you think this is gonna be a good rack for you, then I do think it's gonna last a long time. But that was just our look at the Thule Epos two bike rack. Thanks for watching.